What's up my combo comrades? As I've been saying for the last several episodes, the entire Variant team and myself hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Now, obviously the US and most of the world is under quarantine right now, and it's no fun at all. But here at Variant, we like to look at the positive side of things, the glass half full, if you will. And in the comic book world, something positive did just happen, and that's the digital first release of Batman The Adventures Continue comic book series. If you've been watching Variant for any reasonable amount of time, you know that Batman The Animated Series and anything DCAU related is my number one favorite thing in all of fandom. I've said it on the show several times before, but Batman The Animated series is literally what got me into comic books. Which I think is very apparent considering half of my man cave here is Batman the animated series related, as my background clearly shows. I don't have a problem, you have a problem. So there was no way I wasn't going to talk about the new BTAS related comic book. For those of you wondering, BTAS stands for Batman the Animated Series. And what makes this series extra special is it's being written by Batman the Animated Series legends Paul Dini and Alan Burnett. Literally, these guys are responsible for some of the best stuff we've gotten out of Batman the Animated Series and the DC Animated Universe in general, like Harley Quinn, the now definitive Mr. Freeze origin that we got in Heart of Ice, Mask of the Phantasm, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, and the list goes on for days. And to make it even better than that, Ty Templeton, the artist who did the original BTAS related comic book series, the Batman Adventures and the Batman and Robin Adventures, amongst others, came back to do this series. What I'm saying is this is literally a dream come true for BTAS fans everywhere, which is why I'm geeking out. As for where Batman the Adventures Continue takes place in the DCAU timeline, Paul Dini said this in an interview, quote, Alan and I approached the writing with the idea we were doing the season you might have seen if we had not put the series aside to do Batman Beyond. End quote. Meaning this series takes place after the final season of the new Batman Adventures, but before Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and of course, Batman Beyond. Which is a fantastic idea and is why this episode is titled Batman the Animated Series Returns. Because this comic book series is meant to be the season we would have got if they didn't put the show aside to do Batman Beyond. And yes, I know at that point the show wasn't called Batman the Animated Series anymore, it was called the new Batman Adventures, but you guys know what I'm talking about. But I've ranted and geeked out long enough. Now it's time to start talking about issue one of Batman the Adventures Continue. Comic starts off with Batman swinging through Gotham about to come down on Bane saying, All moons should be this bright, all nights this clear. Not that it matters to me, my sights aim considerably lower. And yes I know we don't have the classic BTAS red skies in these panels, but fret not, that comes later. Anyway, we then see Batman land a punch on Bane before Bane picks him up over his head saying, I will break you, in classic Bane fashion. But seconds later, Bane falls to the ground and we learn that earlier Batman shot trank darts into his venom hose. He then says, I hit him with this a half hour ago. Next time, I'll quadruple the dose, and the darts. At least Bane is the worst thing I'll have to face this evening. Then again, it's 10 o'clock. And with that, Batman finds a giant, very Zeta project and Fleischer looking robot, which I love. It has a very classic, simple sci-fi robot look. Anyway, the robot starts rampaging through Gotham and even kicks a police car, which we find out Harvey Bullock's in, when Batman runs over to ask, you all right, Bullock? And he replies, oh yeah, couldn't be better. Batman then uses his grappling gun to swing off and chase the robot who ends up punching a chunk out of a Wayne Tech building. While this is happening, we get a shot of Jason Todd in the shadow saying, there he goes, Bat vs. Bot. I forgot how much fun Gotham can be. It looks like this is gonna get personal. Did I forget to mention that Jason Todd slash Red Hood is in this series? Red Hood, Deathstroke, and several other characters are gonna be introduced into the DCAU continuity with this series. It also seems like we're gonna get a Batman the Animated Series version of Under the Red Hood. God, I'm excited. Anyway, we then see the robot break into Wayne Tech all Kool-Aid Man style and start blasting the employees and then steal some sort of device, which Batman says, put it back. But the robot just starts firing lasers at him before fleeing the building. So Batman, of course, goes after him and throws explosive batterings at his back. The explosion blows Batman backwards and forces him to take cover in that classic Batman the Animated Series pose. Gotta love those little Easter eggs. But the explosion does nothing to the robot, so it decides to throw a semi-truck at Batman, which he is able to dodge, but it does distract him long enough for the robot to fly away. Yes, the robot also flies, all Iron Giant style. Anyway, on the next page, we see Batman back at the Batcave telling Alfred, whatever method it uses to fly, it's not by jet repulsion or any heat generating means. And yet, I don't think it was extraterrestrial. Alfred says, why would you even consider that? Bruce replies, because of what it stole. That vault contained a piece of alien hardware. Superman brought it to me and Wayne Enterprises is doing tests on it as a favor. Bruce then asks Alfred, what's the jacket for? And he says, a cocktail party at Cloud Nine tonight. Bruce says, forget it. And Alfred replies, 
but I haven't even told you about the surprise guest. We then cut to Bruce at the party where we see Veronica Freeland is flirting with Bruce, saying, why did we ever split up? I still can't figure it out. One day we were a hot item and the next we're friends. Bruce says, friends is good, Veronica. And she replies, if you want someone to watch your cat. Bruce says, I told you, I'm not the marrying kind. She replies, you say that, but I know you're a family man at heart. You just adopted another boy, didn't you? How many is this? He says, Tim is my ward. He's been with me for a while. Veronica then tells him, don't you think these boys could use a mother's touch alone in that big drafty mansion? Lex Luthor then shows up and interrupts their conversation saying, my dear, there are many lost causes. Believe me, I've spent a lifetime on one in particular, but none are so hopeless as trying to elicit even a bit of emotion from Bruce Wayne. Bruce and Lex start talking and Bruce says, I was surprised to hear you were in town. Usually you let me know. Lex says, I'm in and out this time. The fact is I'm not particularly fond of this city. Not since that incident with the Joker, which I think you still blame me for, even though I was as much a victim as anyone. And I certainly don't need another encounter with your Batman. Scrubby little madman, thinks he's so tough, though he wasn't very effective last night, was he? If you're wondering, that run in Lex is talking about with the Joker happened in the Batman Superman animated movie. Anyway, Bruce answers Lex about the robot saying it could have gone better. Luther replies, as much as I hate the alien, the Boy Scout comes in handy sometimes. He would have flattened that robot in no time. Bruce replies, Maybe you can give me his number, you two being so close and all. And Luther says, wouldn't help. He hasn't been around lately. Believe me, I know. He's in the sky, he's on my radar. Last week he had a big battle on the far side of the moon. But since then, no sign of him. Luther then asks Bruce, by the way, what did they get? Bruce replies, they. And Lex says, it, the robot. I presume it didn't program itself. Bruce then responds, wish I could tell you. And while walking away, Lex says, be that way. Later on, back at the Batcave, Bruce tries to call Superman, but he doesn't answer. Alfred asks, you're not gonna leave a message? Bruce responds, if he was anywhere on Earth, he'd have heard the news and been here by now. No, he's gone. That gloating maniac was right. Batman then gets in the Batmobile, the new Batman Adventures Batmobile, which was always a favorite of mine. He then starts heading to Claremont Airfield, a secluded landing strip just south of Gotham, which Batman did a drug bust at a month ago. Batman then says, a giant robot with a stolen volt, it's a perfect hideout. The Dark Knight then breaks into the hangar and tells Alfred he's in, and lo and behold, the robot is there, and then Batman tells Alfred it appears to be unmanned. Let's find out what makes this thing tick, as he attaches a scanner to it. Alfred tells him, we should have a picture momentarily, sir. What about the vault? Batman tells Alfred they're trying to crack the combination. We may have gotten here just in time. And as Batman says this, he gets blasted from behind with some sort of green energy beam. And we see that it's Lex Luthor in his battle suit. And he tells Batman, of all the gin joints in all the world, why do you keep coming into mine, Batman? And just like that, the issue ends. Guys, I am so stoked that we are getting BTAS continuity comic books once again. And I'm very, very curious to see where this series goes from here because this series was mainly just set up. I mean, we only got that one panel of Jason Todd and clearly he's gonna be a big part of the story, but also what the heck is Lex doing with this robot in Gotham? What does he want that vault for? And where's Superman? So many questions that I want answered. I can't wait to keep reading. Also, I'm really excited to see all these new characters introduced into the BTAS DCAU continuity like Deathstroke, Red Hood, uh, Azrael, I think even the Batman who laughs. I'm super excited to see what roles they're gonna play in this story and continuity. And I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but this is gonna be a digital first comic book, much like the Batman 2.0 comic books from years ago by Kyle Higgins. Meaning we're gonna get several digital issues online before it's eventually collected in print, which actually works out perfectly right now because if they were straight to print first, we wouldn't be getting the series because as we know, all print comic books are on pause right now. So this being a digital first series was actually a blessing in disguise because if it wasn't, we wouldn't be getting to read this awesome series during a quarantine. Anyway, it should go without saying, but as the issues continue to come out, we're gonna be right here on Variant to talk about it because you guys know I look for any chance I can to talk about Batman the Animated Series. But before I wrap this up, I wanna let you guys know about my buddy Comic Tom's awesome mystery mail call comic book subscription box. As I just said, it's a comic book subscription box where you get awesome comics every every month and it even has exclusives that you could only get from this box. And for the month of April, the exclusive is a Mike Mignola Gut Ghost variant cover that you could only get from Comic Tom's Mystery Mail Call. So if you guys wanna sign up, I highly recommend you do. You have till April 15th to do so. We're gonna put the link in the description and it's just a good way to get print comic books right now since all comic book shops are closed. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.